Hello everyone, my name is Bree and welcome to Document a Journey. So today is going to be a story time video, uh, a video about how I purchased an RV. A big dream of mine is to be able to travel in an RV, to be able to camp and boondock in some epic places. I think it goes hand in hand with the fact that I also want to be an adventure artist. I don't even know if that's really a term. I have just said that that's kind of what I wanna be. I wanna be able to travel and do art. That would definitely be a dream of mine. And so I feel like a part of that has come true. So to start out, I will tell you that I have never driven an RV, I've never slept in an RV, neither has my husband. This has just been something that I've wanted to do for a while. I do follow a few RV channels, and then I also have a good friend of mine that is a full-time RVer, and it has just looked like uh, something that I would really be into. So I have been talking to my husband about this for years, wanting to do this for years, and he has always said no, until two months ago. Two months ago, he said yes, and the journey began. So what we decided to do was we found a place that sold what we wanted, which was a Thor C-Class uh, 28 foot. And we found a place in Mesa, Arizona. So with COVID and everything happening, we didn't wanna fly and it was an 800 plus mile drive. So we didn't wanna drive the full time um, without stopping. So what we decided to do was rent um, the same thing that would be we would be buying from a place called Cruise America. Wow. Wow were we in for an adventure. So we pick up this rig and we begin our journey. The very first thing we notice is once we go over 50 miles an hour, the whole thing shakes, shakes like this. The seat shake, the steering wheel shakes. Not only do we all have the shakes, but there's like this constant squeaking happening in the cupboards and we cannot locate the squeak and it is high pitched and loud. So the very first thing that we do is we decide to call call where we rented and we explain what we were experiencing and the rental company said yep that's normal our rigs do not go over 55 miles an hour we kind of looked at each other at that point and we were like oh my goodness what did we get ourselves into at that point we thought you know we are going on highways that are 75 miles an hour we can only go what 55 she said but we set the cruise control at 58 because that is all the shake and the high-pitched squeaking that we could muster. And we started our journey down 800 plus miles to Mesa, Arizona. We did stop twice, uh, two nights. It took us two nights to get down there. The first stop we made, um, it was right before um, dinner time around six, sun had just set. We got to watch the sunset and then all of a sudden it started snowing <laughs> and we, I, I shouldn't say we, I was kind of freaking out. So we find a place to stay. I used an app called Campendium. I can leave it in the description box if you're interested. It is free. And so I used that app to locate all the sites that we wanted to stay at. And so I call them up, I pay for the site. They said, we don't even have to come in. I told them we would probably be leaving early so we wouldn't see them. And they said, no problem, we'll just charge your card. I said, sweet. So we pull in, we hook up and we get nice toasty and cozy and warm. And all of a sudden the wind starts to blow the RV. It's blowing and shaking. Um, we eventually go to bed and the wind does not stop until about 3 a.m. After 3 a.m., we get a relatively good night's sleep. Uh, we wake up to, uh, I don't know, maybe two inches of snow, nothing too bad. We get dressed and we get on our way. As we're driving, uh, it's, you know, the sun's starting to rise and it's getting warmer. All of a sudden, water is dropping from the ceiling. <laughs> it's just dropping on our shoulders, on our heads. It's it's coming in and we have no idea where. So we pull over and we figure out that it's coming from the vents above 
each of the beds. They are soaked. The beds are soaked. So we take some trash bags, we tape them to the, like covering the vents, so that way more water doesn't get in. And we get back on the road and we continue our journey, you know, 55 miles an hour, <laughs> bumping down the road. And um, the next stop we stop at, everything has relatively dried out, which was great. Uh, we get plugged in and we eat dinner and we have a wonderful night's sleep. The next day we are driving down the road and this time we are going to stay at an RV park that is right next to the dealership. So we get there pretty early, um, way before the sun has set, which is nice. The kids got to play a little bit outside, ride their bikes and stuff like that because we brought their bikes. And we pull into this site. We're all hooked up. We eat dinner. We're doing our thing and we go to hook up the black water um, hose to the dump station. Um, and this is a full hookup site. So we're getting electric and dump all at the site. So we're there, we're doing the thing. We plug in the hose for the dump and we release the black water and the hose has so many holes in it that it's spewing everywhere everywhere on my husband, everywhere on me, and it's everywhere on the gravel, by the RV, just, it's not okay. <laughs> so we let it all drain. We clean it out because we have to have it clean to, um, to return it. So we clean it all out and we clean up the mess on the rocks and everything um, and then we go inside and we want to take a shower because, you know, that's disgusting. <laughs> so we turn on the hot water heater. We wait an hour or so, let the kids play some more. And I'm the first one to get in the shower and I get in and it is freezing. The hot water heater does not work. It is the coldest shower that I've ever taken. I hurried up and got out. So we go to bed that night. We wake up in the morning and we drive to the dealership. Um, at the dealership, we are talking to our salesman and we are talking about our rig that we are buying and we are asking him a lot of questions and he is getting really annoyed with us. And we are asking him all these questions because of the experience that we had coming down. So then finally we explained why and um, what happened and he was like, Oh my goodness. I cannot believe all the problems you had. And when I was talking to my friend, Melissa, who is a full-time RVer, she was like, those problems normally happen obviously to us, but they don't happen in two days. They happen in six to 12 months <laughs> and they're not like back to back and all these things. And, um, so anyway, he ends up uh, waiving our fees and everything. So we pretty much paid nothing to drive this hunk of junk down for them. And we get in our RV and we pull off to like kind of the closest um, campsite. We wanted full hookups so we could take a shower and we could do all the things, right? The shower works beautifully. It's nice and hot, just like you would at home, um, you know, and we were good to go. So we watched a movie I popped the kids some popcorn. It was really fun until three o'clock in the morning. I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and it was freezing. There was no heat. I checked all the things that you normally check, the panel, making sure everything was on and you know full. Everything was fine, but the heat was not working. Luckily, the kids had onesies on. I just stuck a hat on them. They have amazing sleeping bags. They were fine. My husband and I are the only ones that are cold because all we had was a comforter. Um, but we kind of like put a lot of clothes on and sucked it up. And in the morning, we called our salesman. And we were like, yeah, so our heat went out last night. And he was like, oh, my gosh. So we brought the RV back in to the um, shop. And they gave us a new heater. They gave us a new sail switch, and they also gave us a new battery. 
and sent us on our way. And ever since then, it's been amazing. <laughs> I mean, just look at this. This is actually, as we were driving into Mesa, we are in the clunker of a RV. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that this is Stewart Mountain. Um, there's a little pull-off that you can stop at and you can go on hikes and stuff. It was pretty epic. Uh, but we just kind of, I wanted to capture its vastness. I mean, the mountain range stretched from the left of our screen to the right of our screen. It was huge. It was beautiful. It was completely epic. Um, even with the crazy shaking and squeaking of the rental RV, it was still pretty amazing. So uh, as we drove into Mesa, this is when we went ahead and switched into our RV. So the next place we go is about two hours west. We wanted to head west because we actually wanted to show the kids the beach. California was um, kind of iffy on if they were opening up or if they were shutting down. Um, but they ended up shutting down, so we didn't go further than this. This was our first boondocking spot. It was absolutely perfect. There was no one close to us. It was nice and spread out. We got there before the sunset, so we got to watch the sunset. It was awesome. This is our last spot. We stayed here for two days, um, so we did a lot of boondocking. Boondocking is my favorite. We did, on our way home, we did stop at a few places, and I will show you some footage of that. But overall, whew, oh my goodness. Um, we are headed home right before, we will get home right before Christmas. Um, it has been an interesting journey. I would say that, yes, we had a lot of things go wrong, but during the process and looking back on it, it was a lot of fun. So if taking chances scares you, if you've ever had a dream that, um, that you've always wanted to do and just haven't pulled the trigger, I suggest doing it. It's totally worth it. I cannot wait to take more trips and go more places and take you guys along with me. If you want to see some more pictures or anything like that, head on over to my Instagram. I have uh, been posting a bunch over there. So until next time, everybody, I'll see ya.